Good evening, and welcome to Pray, Vote, Stand. I'm your host, Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. Tonight, after a half century of trying to right the wrong of Roe versus Wade, could this be the year? Earlier today, the Supreme Court heard the biggest challenge to abortion on demand in three decades. What can we read into the justices' response to those oral arguments? And where does the case over Mississippi's law prohibiting abortion after 15 weeks or nearly four months of pregnancy go from here? Alliance Defending Freedom's Erin Holly has litigated before the court, and she'll share her insider perspective on Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization next. Then, what does America have in common with the worst human rights abusers in the world? FRC's Mary Sock will explain how the United States, North Korea, and China have some of the most extreme anti-life policies on the planet. Just how out of step is Roe with the rest of the globe? That's coming up. And finally, how can we pray for the court? And what can we do to prepare for the day those prayers are answered? FRC's director for the Center for Biblical Worldview, David Clawson, will join us later with specific ways Christians can intercede. But first, for three generations, Americans have marched to the Supreme Court, praying for the chance we have today to end the bloodshed of Roe. Millions of pro-lifers have prayed on those steps over the years, survivors of a ruling that's led to one of the largest losses of human life in history. This morning, inside that same court, nine men and women held in their hands the power to see this grave injustice undone. One of them, Justice Amy Coney Barrett, wasn't even a year old when the court she sits on now handed down the death sentence that's taken 62 million lives. Like today's teenagers, she doesn't remember a world without abortion on demand. They are the children who grew up in the ugly shadow of Roe, who saw the devastating effects on women, families, and the peers they'll never have the chance to meet. But they're also the generations who grew up hearing the heartbeats, seeing the ultrasounds, and witnessing the survival of younger and younger babies outside the womb. With every bad ruling, every radical president, they've felt a pro-life nation push back with record numbers of pro-life laws, judges, pregnancy care centers, science, and technology. Now, thanks to decades of heroes, decades of work and prayer, they're on the verge of potentially inheriting the greatest breakthrough for life in 50 years. Now, that doesn't mean today's arguments are the end of the fight. But what it might mean is the beginning of a fair fight for the unborn, one where the American people and the democratic process have a say. But a lot of needs to happen before we can get to that point. We can celebrate first that the Supreme Court took the Mississippi case. That's a victory. It's the first step, but it's a victory. Hearing this morning's arguments was the second. Now comes the hard part waiting and pray. When the justices laugh the chamber this afternoon, they'll have a couple of days to think about what they've heard. They might get their law clerk's perspectives and reread some of the 140 briefs submitted by the two sides. But the next big day is likely to be this Friday when they're scheduled to conference. Maybe by this point, they'll have already made their decision on how they're going to vote. Maybe not. Either way, the next 48 hours are crucial to the future of Roe v. Wade and the sanctity of life in America. By tradition, only Supreme Court justices are allowed in the room during that conference. That means no staff, no clerks, no security guards. Chief Justice John Roberts will call the session to order and speak first. The other eight justices will talk about the case in the order of their seniority, meaning the Trump appointees, Neil Gorsuch, Amy Coney Barrett, and Brett Kavanaugh will go last. Now, when everyone is finished, the Chief Justice will cast the first vote in the most consequential U.S. case in over three decades. The others will then follow suit. In America, we won't find out how they ruled for another six long months. Until then, our job 
is simple, but important, to pray and prepare. Whatever the court decides, the consequences for our country will be enormous. If the justices reverse Roe, the battle will then move to the states, where churches and local leaders will be on the new front lines. If they uphold one of the most tragic judicial mistakes in American history, then we'll do what we've been doing for a half a century. We'll fight on. In either case, we hold on to this truth, that all life is created in the image of God and should be welcomed into this world and protected under our laws. That truth, my friends, will never change. Tonight, we also lean on another biblical truth, that the hearts of kings and judges are in God's hands. So this evening, and for the next 48 hours, we ask Him to move on those hearts and spare our nation. May this be the beginning of a new day for the unborn. May this be the beginning of a new day for America. Join me as we begin tonight in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word, that you have instructed us that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. And Lord, we have confessed over and over as a church and as a nation, Lord, the sin of abortion, the shedding of innocent blood. We stand, Lord, at the threshold of repentance, where we may actually see our, our court reverse and go the other direction once again leading this nation toward a position of embracing the sanctity of human life. Lord, I pray that you would move on the hearts of these justices, that, Lord, they would embrace that truth, that all life, regardless of what zip code it may have been conceived in or the circumstances surrounding the conception, that all life is created in your image and therefore worthy of protection. Guide our conversation tonight, Lord. May it be pleasing to you and stir the heart of your people like you've never stirred them before. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.